The guqing or qing is one of the oldest instruments with more than 3,000 years of history in China. In ancient Chinese culture, the guqing used to be used by scholars to cultivate themselves. Nowadays, because of the rich cultural context the guqing carries, it has attracted the attention of scholars from the West. However, the guqing as an ancient instrument is still not well known and remains only known in a small circle in the UK and the other parts of the world. The London Yulan Qing Society is one of the three major Qing societies of the West, serving Guqing players in the UK. Cheng Yu is the founder of the society, and also a doctor who is teaching in SOAS University of London. Since I came to London now more than 20 years, um, this quite small uh, circle of people who play Chinese instruments, uh, let alone with professional Chinese musicians, you can count, you know, it's very few. So I just thought there are actually a uh, lot of people ask us, you know, where can we learn the instruments, especially this instrument. Actually, it's um, really take a lot of people's uh, um, appreciation. Because many people are interested in the guqing and other Chinese instruments, Dr. Cheng Yu and her colleagues have set up different courses for people who want to learn these instruments. Patty Brown is a student of Dr. Cheng Yu. She is Italian, but she has been living in the UK for over 50 years. Now she and her family live in London. Alongside loving Chinese culture, she adopted a Chinese daughter in China, so she believes she has a bond with China. She has been learning the guqing for nine months. I really love the specific Chinese sound that only the guqing has because it's the oldest instrument in China and then probably in the world. And I, I just loved that sound. You know, it's a, quite a low register, you know, it's a very, the key is very low, and it's got a real beautiful, beautiful sound. It wasn't easy for Patty to start her learning journey. She spotted her interest in the guqing, so she first looked it up on YouTube. Starting from the beginning, she wrote down every symbol to get to know the knowledge of Chinese notation. Each finger, now I know these characters, so you never play with your little finger, yeah? That's just not. And so, of course, this is Da, you know, this is Ren, this is Jong, this is Ming, so. Mingja, huh? I think it's called, isn't it, the ring finger? All the, the, the music is written in a different way, so you have to follow a different kind of music score. So that also you have to learn Tiao, you know, all the different ways of moving your fingers. And then because a Guqin has two different ways of, like the right hand does one thing, the left hand does the opposite, you know, the, the right hand plucks, the left slides, and so it's very hard to coordinate it. Apart from the coordination of both hands, the rhythm of the Guqin is also a big challenge for learners. Spring arrived at this mountainside and it's very lively and full of life. There is a story behind each Guqing piece. Some tunes show the joy of reuniting with family and friends. Some tunes show the grand sense and tensions of war and some are sad and slow to express farewell to friends.
because the rhythm is different from one part to another. Eventually, Patty found out that by learning online only, she couldn't learn it in depth. Sometimes it couldn't even help her to play a whole piece, so she decided to find a teacher to help her. Luckily, she found Yu Lanqing Society, so that she can have a face-to-face -face class with the teacher at the teacher's home once a week. Usually, I actually video her so I can follow or I can hear the tune because the actually the other problem is that you, I don't know the tune, you know. So if you don't know the tune, I go a lot by ear. You know, if you don't know the tune, it's very hard to replicate it.、Uh, and then I hear the tune, I hear the tune, and I practice, I practice, and then I can play what she played and play along with that. And then I know I know the piece. When I can do that, then I know the piece of music. The reason behind the complex and changeable melody of the guqing can be tracked back to the culture of the guqing itself. The strings were toned into pentatonic. It represents Chinese five elements: metal, wood, water, fire, and earth. In the old time, the length of the guqing body measures 36.5 inches to symbolize the 365 days of the year. The thirteen dots are harmonic indicators, which, based on Chinese thirteen lunar months, the upper board signifies sky, and the bottom is earth. Therefore, the performance of Guqing signifies the unison of heaven, earth, and man. I have general anxiety disorder. I had this, and I had trouble getting to sleep before. So I'd wear headphones in bed and listen to different types of music, and I always thought Chinese music was the most calming one. And then I found the instrument that it was, and I thought, why don't I just play it myself before going to sleep, <laughs> so I, I don't have to listen to the music anymore. Charlie Thomas is 19 years old, and he lives in Birmingham. He is also one of the students of Dr. Cheng Yu. You don't need to know Chinese to read the notation. Obviously, you learn the Chinese numbers and then what each stroke stands for, and then you can read everything. In fact, I think the notation is easier than reading Western music. I've loads of my friends I met through playing the guqing, and it's helped me learn Chinese by talking to them. 我每天联系这个句子，但是，嗯，我来这里时候我的手一点，<笑>所以<笑>如果我有有些不好的地方，请不看。<笑> so it's given me more skills than just playing guqi, and I can now converse with people roughly, and then I can read a lot of like. Chinese now, and now I know loads of people. I'm much more active, go out more, do more things. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of people would look at what some people say about the culture and maybe say it calms you down, it clears anxiety, clears the mind. Some people would look at that and then laugh or be like, "That can't be true," but it. It really is true, I think, because it's helped me. It clears my mind. It clears my anxieties when I'm playing it. So I think there's a lot of merit to what ancient Chinese people were saying back then. I think they were correct about a lot of things. Although the sound of the guqing can make people feel calm. It has also limited the development of the guqing itself in some way. It's very challenging to, if you wanted to use Chinese instrument to play in the mainstream stage, let alone to play with Western musicians. Especially for guqing, it's very personal, very intimate instrument.、Uh, it's quite but very quiet. If you have noticed, it's not often played with. A group of、uh, musicians, even in China, it, it says like a、uh, more regarded as a 
personal instrument that you play just for yourself. You don't really play with a, a lot of different instruments, even in Chinese music context. You don't see things like that. So this continues in here as well. In addition to the reason that Guqing itself carries, the degree of understanding of Chinese culture also determines the popularity of the Guqing. China has a, a very interesting history, and up until recently, people didn't really know about Chinese culture in the past, the, the more kind of, let's say, ancient Chinese culture. And I think Chinese people probably didn't know themselves a lot about the Chinese culture. So it's all very new. So unless you have some sort of link, like my link is my daughter or whatever, you don't really know about it. Because India, you know, for example, uh, you know, Britain has a connection to India because it used to rule it, you know, and uh, the sitar, you know, the other Indian instruments are very well known. I mean, they might not be super popular, but they're very well known. And, uh, Dr. Chen Yu, in fact, told me that there is a grade, you know, when you play, learn the piano, you have to do grade one, grade two, grade three. There is the same for the sitar, but there isn't for the guqin. And she's trying to introduce that into the British uh, curriculum, you know. The guqin in the ancient time in China uh, until now is more for sort of for scholarly and not for everybody, not for common people, everybody, to know this instrument is because of that uh, uh, background. So the guqin is less uh, well known in China for a certain time. Until the 90s, uh, 50s, it is only about 50 people uh, who can play guqin. Also during the Cultural Revolution, uh, it wasn't really uh, for it's, it's like one of the feudal instruments being banned for many, many years. Because the instrument is still within very small circle of lovers and scholars and, and the cultural enthusiasm, and many people in the West don't know them, and there's very uh, limited market for you to play to promote this instrument. And uh, that's why this instrument still remains a very uh, specialized, small circle of a uh, group of people. But I hope it will change. And I would like to present this instrument to a wider audience in the UK.